Good morning, everybody. My name is uh, Paolo Cernowski, graduated in agri agricultural science, microbiology and dairy industry with 30 years experience in dairy field, 20 years at SACO. Today, SACO area manager responsible for technical support and sales to distributor and key account located in Northeast, South Europe, Balkans, Russian Federation, and the former cheese country. Today, the SACO system webinar will be discussed application of mesophilic starter EPS producer. SACO system is the culmination of the international biotech excellence applied in the food, nutraceutical, and pharmaceutical industry. SACO system slogan of supporting food, culture, and life communicate intent that the company mission is to support the culture of food and health, but also to develop culture, for example, bacteria, for the food and health sector liable to both human and agriculture and uh, animals. System express extraordinary, extraordinary synergy between the company Calificio Clerici, Sacco, Centro Sperimentale del Latte and Chemicalia. It is a unique functional network that maintains the characteristic and productive specialities each entity. SACCO is an Italian family-owned company that offers a large range of innovative products. These include the starter culture for food fermentation, in particular dairy, and nutraceutical supplement, probiotic culture, as well as an instrument for the improvement of food. The sister company Calificio Clerici has been an Italian leader in the rennet production since 1872 and in 2006 acquired the Swedish company Chemicalia. Sacco, furthermore, acquired an Italian culture producer, CSL, in 2013. Family company, tradition and expertise, creative intelligence, reliability, research and innovation at which the company invests 6% of the turnover. Knowledge sharing, flexibility and customization are the core value of this system. The ecosystem has seven production plants, selling more than 110 countries worldwide through a network of agent distributors characterized by high professionalism. Last year, in 2008, generated a total turnover of 108 million euros. There are more than 50 research and development co collaboration with the university and technical center around the world. And the collaborators can come from 20 different countries. This, this has created a unique intellectual and culturally diverse platform to draw from. The customer always look for a new product with interesting features on the market, often looking for innovation. In the mesophilic starter line, SACO offers innovative blend. Starter blend with strain that produce isopolysaccharide. The application covers many different products and technology, where the application of mesophilic culture play a fundamental role. We see uh, side in this slide, uh, fermented mix, let's say uh, classification. We have a fermented milk with yeast, lactic fermentation, and mold lactic fermentation. 
The application of these uh, mesophilic uh, viscos include all these kind of uh, products. You will see something later in detail. Isopolysaccharide has uh, some uh, important function. One of these functions is the prevention of desiccation, the adherence, and the resistance to specific host immunity. You see in this picture, one on the left side, uh, one detail where the EPS are present and uh, cover the surface like that, and uh, the non-EPS production leave the bacteria say, free. The lactic acid bacteria can be divided in two categories, the ROPI and non-ROPI. The ROPI can be capsular and unattached EPS producer, the non-capsular unattached EPS producer. The non-ROPI, also non-capsular unattached EPS producer, and capsular EPS non-producer. Sacco in the collection has a several strain of Staphylococcus thermophilus, Lactobacillus vulgaricus, and Lactococcus lactis suspicious cremoris, with the ability to produce EPS. In general, the EPS are a long chain, high molecular weight, alpha and beta linkage, which may contain homopolysaccharide or heteropolysaccharide. The EPS have the ability to trap the moisture and delay their expulsion, interact with casein and whey protein. The EPS homosaccharide are composed in different uh, series or different molecular. Can be KD glucans. For example, dextans joined with K13 and K16, or LD glucan molecules consisting of L13 glucose and L12 chain. Fructans mainly composing the D fructose molecular L26. Other polygalactans, structurally identical repeated strain attach glycosidic bridge. The EPS heteropolysaccharide compound in chain, repeating units containing bridge K and L. Polysaccharide composes very similar molecular D glucose, D galactose, and L rhamnose is different proportion. The EPS, we say, could be filant or ropey or unencapsulated, not ropey. The EPS filant are extracted into the surrounding of the medium while the encapsulated remain attached to the cell's surface, creating a coverage or cell biofilm. Many pathogenic bacteria are converted by polysaccharide encapsulated for this important, and this is important for their virulence. For example, Staphylococcus pneumonia. Some encapsulated EPS producing strain can also produce EPS filling. In case the application in cheese, it's preferable to use strain producing EPS encapsulated in order to avoid the viscosity formation in the residual way. This is very important from the practical point of view because this limited the application of this uh, mesophilic uh, EPS producer in the cheese sector. The amount of the each type of EPS synthesized is highly variable and strongly influences the type of the strain and the growth condition. 
production of EPS is directly associated to the growth of the and depend on the temperature, the pH, and the composition of the medium. There is, there is interaction between milk protein and APS producer by Lactococcus lactosus, such as cremoris. The radiological and microstructural properties of various dairy products to contain APS were described in diverse studies. But the mechanism of interaction between the protein and the APS is still not completely known. So we have to investigate more deeply about uh, the interaction in between the protein, the coagulum, and the EPS produced by the different uh, strains, in particular the mesophilia. To the scanner, through the scanner electronic microscope, has been determined EPS molecular that clearly interact with casein. We will see later some uh, image in the buttermilk media, and also with serum protein, determined in the permeate, whey permeate. And that have an active role in the formation of the aggregates. We can see now some uh, picture. Who shows, the first picture shows the matrix of the buttermilk obtained from the ropey strain in buttermilk fermented at the pH 5.8. You can see in this picture the bacteria, and is called B. And uh, with the letter E, we can see the filaments of the EPS who join this mass, which is the protein coagulated, the protein base. The picture B is a, let's say, detail, more detail of the same picture, but we see more clearly the EPS release in the media. This is again, a, is a buttermilk media, same condition, pH uh, 5.8. And we see here, at this point, the cells and the, here, the filaments released in the mass coagulated. Of course, this mass is the protein coagulated. We say here in detail more clearly the filament. They could be very long, and of course, these are uh, producing a network that we can see later. In this case, we have the whey permate, 6% protein, and uh, again, the bacteria and the EPS that join and organize the protein coagulated in the, in the product. This picture is related to the cheese, the cheddar uh, matrix. We have uh, some uh, bacteria here without uh, APS in the picture A. In the picture B and C, we can see clearly the uh, network, the EPS network created. This is all EPS that grow around the bacteria. They are released around the bacteria. And this is even more clear, the structure of the EPS and uh, of course the, the protein that are linked and mixed together with APS. This white is the fat, uh, the fat is also called. Again, in this uh, picture, we can see the network, the EPS network. And here we have the, the EPS released just close to the bacteria and uh, very, Short. Let's say this, let's say, is not responsible for the filament and the ropiness. But this kind of EPS can show, not in cheddar, but in the fermenter mix, some ropiness. Higher or lower level, but. Which are the reason to use and or consider the use of mesophilic EPS producer? First of all, 
enhancing the structure and acting as a natural stabilizer. Second important point, we can guarantee the clean label. This lactic acid bacteria are not chemicals, are not uh, artificial, but they grow inside the, the product together with the other bacteria. We can also have some influence in the efficiency in production. We can see maybe separately some case, but the use of the APS can organize better the dry matter in fermented milk or cheese, saving structure during the shelf life. Of course, this net is uh, stable. It's not destroying during the shelf life of fresh product. So we can guarantee the structure stable during the shelf life of every kind of fermented milk product. And last point, the culture can be combined with different culture, of course, with some acidification culture that can be used in combination, but also protective culture or, or end probiotic strain. Traditionally, the mesophilic bacteria producing viscosity via EPS production are origi originally come from Scandinavia. Products like Pimjol, Pima, Dili are traditionally consumed there. The special characteristic of this group of strain allow them to be used in order to improve and change some other traditional products, such sour cream, fermented mix, kefir thai, and other. The particular characteristic should be used also in case the fermented base is prepared with the vegetable fat. In the picture here, we can see a little bit the, the position and the name of the product in the globe. And in the table here, we can see sour cream and the local name which describe, let's say the sour cream concept like the smetana in the Russian continent or smetana in Romania, Kisolo Pavlaka in the Balkans, fermented milk like Pima or Kisomleko, high viscose fermented mix like Vili or Pimjol, located especially in this part of the world, Latticello or buttermilk, traditionally present in, of course, also in Italy, but uh, specifically in Germany and the German speaking country, and uh, the universe of kefir and the different type of kefir, which can be called in different names around the world, but it can be kefir drink, kefir type, or in case uh, dug in the Iran on the, on the, or this part of the Asia. Even if Duke is a thermophilic, but can be helped with the mesophilic EPS viscose in order to improve and uh, have a better viscosity. Where come from the strain of this mesophilic producing azopolysaccharide. Traditionally, the fermented product were made with the undefined bulk starter culture. Later, we define blend, again via bulk start. The pr producer had a big variability and a lot of phage problem because of that. One of the problems is related to the few different strains and little di diversity in relation to the phage. This Latococcus cremoy strain had. All coming from Tete plant, growing in the northern country. The other was to keep the constant composition when propagate over passage. This is an important point because uh, SACO works a lot in this area and uh, uh, by collecting this strain, developed some culture for DVS inoculation, we will see later. But uh, originally, the problem of the client, the problem in production was related to this difficulties to keep 
constantly the bike started in the perfect performance in terms of viscosity, in terms of acidification. The viscosity and texture. We can see some picture here, who shows a little bit of what can be, not the limit because it can be even more viscous, but uh, the effect that we have of this, this EPS in the uh, fermented milk mass. For high viscous, still fermented milk like Pima, good viscosity, slightly ropey texture, also accepted or liked. This is a product mainly produced uh, in Finland, calling this name. This product traditionally was made with undefined mesophilic DR culture. And in order to get a better structure, Dili culture was added. Paco developed Cryofast M335Q and Cryofast M339Q, giving the wanted aroma and the high viscosity in fermented milk. Even though feel warm to give an optimal viscosity without effort afterwards giving blown cartons. This is an example of culture that we developed in order to offer some DVS culture in this case, frozen culture, giving the best structure, giving phase rotation and a stable result during the production time. Aroma is also important. Of course, the EPS don't carry aroma, but the aroma in the culture traditionally is important and the fermented product were Reserve naturally flavor, requested naturally flavor. Any gas production is wanted after packing. Any post acidification after production during shelf life. Stable structure and no way separation. Or no separation in the in the cartons. The good flavor has to be guaranteed by the complete citrate fermentation during the incubation period in the fermentation tank before the packing. The aroma formation, you can see here the fermentation process. The products are requested naturally flavor and no gas production, pH stability during shelf life. But the fermentation here that we have to consider is the citric acid fermentation and the production of DHT. We can see also this pathway is a consider is hetero fermentation pathway and we have a production of CO2 and the flavor compound, the acetyl and acetoin. Starting from the citric acid, we have the degradation until the simple molecular and the acetyl is a very active part of this flavor component. In SACO, we have a, we develop different kind of blend and considering the citrate fermentation, we can see the kinetic of the uh, fermentation of citric acid. In this graph, I hope you can see clearly, we have uh, in this axis the uh, citric acid concentration, let's say from uh, 1,600 milligram per liter. And then we have a different uh, letter here, the N, R, P, P, Q, S. This letter indicate the efficiency of the citric acid fermentation. So N, in our culture, what we call N, consider degradation until 1,200 milligram per liter. So nearly 70, 90% of the citrate will be fermented. And one part remain. When we have a PNR, we consume more, and we consume nearly between 70 and 40% of the citrate. PQS are the blend where we have the major part of the citrate fermented and we arrive even below 40%. What we can see the, the, the step where we have the, the best fermentation time of the citric acid is the, the time between the pH 550 and 5, 4.9. This is the point where the citrate fermentation has the major 
activity. Some examples of the application of this mesophilic FPS producer include uh, so before, but smetana, the dairy product obtained from the fermentation of cream, basically produced in the Eastern European country. The percentage of fat can change from 8 to 35. The taste is very delicate, slightly acidulous, viscous, and creamy. The most popular product today contains 20% fat, 15 and 12. The market trend in any case is to consider the, fat, the reduction of the fat content or the substitution with vegetable fat. Condition to keep the classical structure in the final product. Of course, the structure cannot change. And of course, the EPS producer, by reducing the fat content, can have a direct influence on the structure and to keep the creaminess of this sour cream, even with low fat content. In the picture, we have some uh, application. For example, uh, there is a packaging uh, from uh, Russia. This is one way that uh, smetana is uh, packed uh, still today in the Russian part. And below is the application in the classical soup, the borscht. Cream must be uh, creamy, uh, and then will be spread in the in the in the in the product. That can be used also for a sweet product like a dressing for fruit, or sometimes eat directly. The other application of the APS producer is uh, probably the extreme uh, product. The Vili is a uh, originated or developed produced in uh, Finland. Mesophilic fermented milk. This fermented milk is the result is the microbiological action of lactic acid bacteria. And for the traditional Vili, we have also the growth of the Otricum candidum on the surface. We see in the picture, the Otricum candidum originally was uh, present in the milk and uh, the fermentation allowed this mold to grow. Now we add our mold directly in the in the production line, and this is a specific geotricum candidum for vili. In addition, most traditional vili are slime forming, Lactococcus lactis species cremoris, produce EPS heteropolysaccharide, and this is characteristic of this product. In this table, we have uh, some example of different applications around the world. Fermented mix take a different name, like Sana in Romania, Ima in Finland. We can see the, the column of the temperature. We can have a different uh, condition. Uh, for example, in Romania, the fermentation is around 25, 30 degree. Fermentation time, 10, 12 hour. And the target pH is always between 460, 450 before start steering and then packing. But in Finland, in the Nordic country, the temperature become a little bit lower. The fermentation become long, so 20, 22 degrees, 18, 20 an hour even. Buttermilk, 27, 22. Some application also include the dressing for American cottages, for the cream used for dressing. Sometimes is liquid, but sometimes is acidifying or partly acidifying, and the EPS can influence a little bit the, the creamy structure of this dressing. Sour cream also can uh, have a different uh, um, application and condition. Again, Balkans 25-32 degree. Methane in Russia normally is fermented between 28 and 32. These temperatures are okay for the EPS formation. The growth of the bacteria is uh, good. The cremoris is uh, developing well in this uh, condition. And the Vili, we saw before, this structure arrive again with a very low fermentation temperature. 
and a relatively long fermentation time. Stage issues. This is always a, a point when we operate with the DVS codes. In addition to the actual product range, SACO developed two very robust and interesting blends. We mentioned before the Creofast M335Q and Creofast 339Q. That culture giving the wanted aroma and the high viscosity in the fluid fermented mix. The gas production due to the heterofermentation fermentation process is very controlled. We saw in the graph the Q means nearly complete citrate fermentation. So we control the post gas formation. Even though still warm to give optimal viscosity without afterward giving low cartons. This is one of the problem, practical problems. So the client don't want to see the, the packing blowing during the shelf life of the product. We control this by the citrate fermentation. The characteristic will be respected even if the product should be stored in a little bit warmer condition. Of course, if the hetero fermentation has not the base of the citrate to ferment, if we have a contaminants, of course, is another subject, but not coming from this kind of plant. Part of the production range are also other culture in frozen and freeze dried form. Always in our range available are the basic culture plus the rotation in case of freeze dried and frozen culture too. In the next uh, slide, we have a little bit focus in the blend that are available, which include the mesophilic EPS. We see the M description is a mesophilic, and the composition show the presence of acidifying strain, EPS producer, and heterofermentative strain, especially the acetylactis. We have a culture who produce more or less flavor, who ferment the citrate faster, medium fast, or very fast. In the range, we have uh, the indication of the culture M3 or M4. This difference shows us the possibility to have more EPS or more viscosity coming from that blend. So potentially the M431R could be even more viscous than the M333R, for example. In this slide, again in frozen form, we have a blend with mesophilic and thermophilic. So the MS is a mesophilic thermophilic EPS producer. We have even Staphylococcus thermophilus producing EPS inside. The application of this uh, culture is a bit wider than the pure mesophilic, so we can touch a little bit higher temperature in order to use the ability of the Staphylococcus thermophilus to help with their part of the uh, EPS production. And again, we have a different level of flavor production Describe with again with the letter N or Q. Next is the DVS freeze dried blend we call a Leofast. So we have a mesophilic homofermentative with different EPS level production. No citrate fermenting. So this culture can be used alone or in combination with other culture to use this ability to release the EPS in the media. On the other hand, the M242N and the 342N are uh, heterofermentative, producing flavor, say medium level, Purely mesophilic. 
and again mesophilic and thermophilic homo fermentative or homo hetero fermentative are included in this range in the bracket we have uh, the indication of the rotation uh, we have uh, ms332 for example or mos 356e we have uh, also the rotation zero in this per core uh, conjugate Okay, um, this is a little bit uh, the description of this topic. In the, in the screen, you see my email. You have the chat to send some question, if you have question. Uh, one question is uh, related to the fact that, that we have a blend homofermentative and uh, uh, related with the pathway producing CO2 and the flavor. Uh, the question, why I put these uh, things? So normally the strain EPS producer are homofermentative, but in the final product, uh, we cannot consider only the EPS inside. We have to also including the blend, a culture capable to give a nice creamy taste or a butter taste or let's say mesophilic taste. And for that reason, the citrate fermentation has the role to produce the base to produce the acetyl. And the acetyl is the flavor component. That's why in this presentation are associated the EPS and the citrate fermentation. Because basically, for, for the final product, this product goes in the parallel way. Uh, one question related to to the dosage. So to the um, to mainly to determine a little bit the level of EPS production in the uh, production process. Of course, we have uh, uh, several points that we have to consider. Something is the treatment, uh, the, the base treatment, the, the homogenization and the, the pasteurization and let's say the general uh, condition to produce the fermented meat. And this give, of course, a, a, direct impact on the creaminess of the product. The EPS enter in this dynamic and uh, include, uh, according to the media that has to be fermented, the EPS will be promoted or not uh, by considering, for example, the temperature. If we are working in condition that the temperature is not correct or too high, the EPS from the mesophilic will be not stimulated. But if we have the, the best condition, then we can also include the dosage. So that's why for different product, we suggest a different dosage. For example, for Vili, we have to work with a high uh, inoculation rate. For Pima or fermented milk product or buttermilk, where the dry matter or the characteristics are not so extreme like Vili, then we can work with, uh, let's say, with our standard dosage or even sometime lower. The, how is important the control of the temperature? Of course, the, the temperature are important during the fermentation time because express the condition of the EPS to be produced. So the, the gene responsible for this production has to be switched on and the control of the temperature is fundamental. Let's say that at the industrial level, if we have a tank, uh, normally the temperature is controlled. But if we pack the, the product for set product, of course, the thermostate must be um, stable. So the temperature must be stable during the fermentation time. Because in this time, the gene responsible for the expression of the EPS will be switched on. If the product become cold, this gene, so below 20, for example, this gene will be not open and uh, you will not see the EPS. Uh, 
uh, one question if if we really don't want the gas production only q and mo range to be the candidate uh, no gas if we don't want gas we have to avoid the hetero fermentation so we have to go in the blend like mo or mos but if we want flavor and stability after during the shelf life and we ferment for example cream or some base in the fermentation tank we can use the q because the q uh, will use the citrate and we have a flavor but we avoid the post gas gas formation Does the pH of the mixed base affect the balance of the starter strength? Yes, of course. The, the, the pH, the milk pH or the, the, the fermentation is related to the changing of the pH. Uh, what uh, influence the balance of the culture is for sure the media, is, is for sure the mineral part who can activate or not, and the amino acid and the growth factor that can activate more or less a different strain. But this not uh, influence only the EPS producer, but uh, all the, the culture in himself. This is a nice question. Is possible to eliminate completely the stabilizer with the EPS producing culture? Uh, the answer is maybe yes, maybe not. <laughs> the EPS, for sure, uh, if we have a good uh, base treatment, good homogenization, uh, good condition for the fermentation, normally we can produce without EPS. But in some place we have a low dry matter and uh, the client uh, are uh, used to see, for example, some consistency, for example, generated by gelatin, for example, which is a jelly structure. These APS don't give a jelly structure, give a creamy structure, um, soft and gentle. So if the client use the gelatin, probably they will continue to use gelatin because the product is accepted like that traditionally. But uh, if you want to produce a clear um, product without the um, stabilizer, then we can work with the EPS production by, of course, uh, modulating the concentration or the dose of the culture. Any other question? One question is uh, here. The production of the EPS producer strain is difficult. Uh, it's not difficult the fermentation, but it's difficult the separation. So we have a um, quite good uh, range of starter in our collection. Some starter uh, are uh, so high producer of EPS, and the separation is a little bit uh, complicated with the technology that we have. So this strain, let's say, are waiting in the collection until the technology or the process can be enough good to separate this uh, strain from the from the mass fermenter. Another question here, which kind of cheese could be produced with that strain? We have some example. For example, in, in a in uh, Germany, this cheese is called beer case. So it's a cheese with low fat, low fat, and the uh, EPS help in this uh, technology to keep the dry matter from the whey and keep the cheese, uh, let's say, soft, not uh, dry or too too dry or too gummy. 
the problem here we mentioned before the application is uh, um, limited by the role of the or the activity that will be made in the way afterwards the bacteria pass in the way we can have a eps production in the way and this way if it's treated by uf or membrane will block the membrane so this if we have this application of the way afterwards i don't suggest to use the eps but if the way goes for the food feed or for the animal feed or some other application not need to pass through the membrane then we can use the APS then the effect is to bind protein and uh, avoid the release of the whey afterwards um, it is technologically possible to control the shorter openness with the current culture for yogurt and sour cream uh, of course, the, um, the bacteria uh, express their activity in the maximum level in the optimal condition or depress the performance. If you put the EPS producer in the yogurt, mesophilic in the yogurt, of course, we have a temperature high, so they will be not expressed. Streptococcus thermophilus will be expressed in that case. Uh, of course, we can consider the dose. But we, can, we have to consider always, always the equipment and the structure of the client. There is no one really one standard suggestion or some standard application. Normally, we have to apply, we have to control, analyze what happened, see the expression of the production of the EPS client by client, and then determine the dosage it's not complicated this is uh, something that uh, has to be used as a tailor-made solution for all clients basically uh, Again, another question, it is possible to use mesophilic in semi-hard cheese and soft. Yes, of course, it's possible, but the limitation is not the application in the, in the cheese, but the limitation is the whey treatment. Uh, this strain can be used in combination with the Stetococcus thermophilus or a yogurt base or different uh, composition. It depends on which is the target of the client in terms of semi-hard cheese characteristic and uh, and soft cheese. So you have uh, you can see in the in the screen my email. I can uh, I will be pleased to answer you by mail if you have other questions or a particular specific topic to discuss or just uh, communicate. And um, I would like to thank you. You will find all the video in the on demand at uh, webinar sacosystem.com. And you will see this uh, webinar when you like. Uh, if somebody wants to come back tonight, uh, I, we will talk again about this uh, presentation tonight at five Italian time. And uh, I would like to thank you for your attention, for your question, important and uh, very specific question. Thank you very much and hope to see you soon.